My name is Heidi and I'm working for Applied Photophysics and I'm going to do a short video on how to use a CD spectrometer from our company which is called Kyroscan. For this instrument, starting from the left, it has the light source out here on the left side. It's a 150 watt xenon lamp producing ozone. In the main body there is first a um, lamp power supply that powers the lamp. And then there's an electronics unit over here that is the brain of the system where all the communication to the different parts happens. Underneath here, there is the monochromator. The monochromator is a dual prism linearly polarizing monochromator. Then in here we have behind the parts here, we have a photoelastic modulator that is where you generate the circularly polarized lights. We have the sample handling unit here, which is where you place your sample, and we have a detector. Then on top of that, we have the computer, we have a temperature controller, and then you have a water bath down here. So I'm now going to tell you what the starting up procedure will be for the Kyra scan. We are Having an ozone producing lamp, it means that the UV light that is produced always will react with oxygen in the air and that generates ozone. Ozone is very da dangerous and damaging for your uh, respiratory system and in addition it's very damaging to the optics in the system as well. Um, on top of that, you have ozone and oxygen that absorbs light in the UV range. So to avoid all of these factors, we always purge the system with nitrogen. So I'll switch on the nitrogen. You have to switch on the main tab. You have to switch on, on the smaller tab. And you have to have the dials showing these values. This Kyroscan software is the control panel. This is where you will set up your experimental design. It's always a good idea to work from the top left down to the bottom right when you're starting, setting up your design. In the top left corner, there's an option of choosing what kind of signal are you looking at. CD signal, absorbance, fluorescence or voltage. You have the option of choosing to measure absorbance simultaneously with CD. Then you have a temperature control area here. I will turn on the um, temperature controller down here, which is done on the back. When you have the temperature controller on, because it's heating your sample inside here, you always have to turn on the water circulator so that you don't overheat the system. The water circulator is down here and it's just one click on the back, like that. You can set up temperature ramps. Um, you have different options for that. So if I click the settings, you will have a window here. You can set one specific temperature if you, that's what you want, or you can enable temperature ramping and you have the option of setting a range of temperature you want to look at you can either do it as a step ramp where you go to one specific temperature, settle there, do your scan and move to the next temperature. Or you can do a continuously ramp, which is also explained in our manual and on our website. Down here, there's uh, the sample handling unit area. You have an option of using a titrator, which is currently not attached to the instrument, but it could be if you're interested. Uh, it shows a temperature display here, which is a small temperature probe that you have the option of putting into your sample, so you always know <coughs> what the temperature of your sample is. On the left side here, you have the option of collecting a baseline or showing a baseline. If you already have a baseline from an early experiment, you can also load that in. Underneath all of that, you have the monochromator range. You always set up a range of scanning. Um, the software or the instrument is always scanning from the highest to the lowest. The step is the number 
that you're going to uh, in terms of wavelength. So at the moment it's set to 1. It means that it will go from 400 to 399 to 398 and so on. Then underneath that there's a time per point. It means, defines how long time you spend per point you go to on your scan. Um, typical settings would be somewhere between 0.1 second up to 1 second. It depends on what you're doing. Okay. Finally, you have option of doing kinetics or spectrokinetics, if you should be interested in that. And you also have the option of choosing repeats if you want to repeat your experiment um, with the same sample and run more than one um, spectra. When you open the Prodata viewer, uh, that always have to communicate with this software. The Predata, therefore, I always open Prodata viewer from within this software using this icon. I click and it opens. It's very important that the, these are communicating because the Prodata viewer defines where you save your data. If they are not communicating and you're acquiring data, the software will not know where to save it and you might lose your data. In the Predator Viewer, it's fairly simple. The icons are similar to normal um, Windows icons. You can move up and down folders, so you can create new folders or you can browse the folder directory. So I could go to the desktop and I could make a new folder like that, that I could call demo. And if I want all my data to be saved in this folder, I would right click and click set working directory here. You always have to set the working directory as to where you want to save your data. Now I will go over a few things that you need to consider for when you're setting up your experiments. It's very important that you consider what path length to use what concentration to use and what influence your buffer system has on your experimental setup. The first thing I will do is to uh, very quickly demonstrate how the path length can influence how far in the UV you can go. You have different options of path lengths. You can use a 10 by 10 cuvette like this or you can use a shorter cuvette, for instance a 0.5 millimeter like this one. Since most buffer systems are based on water, I have made sure to use water here for my demonstration. The first thing I will do now is to then set up the software. Because we're looking at absorbance and not actually a CD signal, I will make sure that I choose absorbance as a signal mode. The wavelength range I will choose down here is from 180 up to 260 which is a typical range for most proteins. And I will set the step to one nanometer. And I'll click set. I will just keep the time per point to 0 0.1 second, because that is quick. Before I put in my samples, I will make sure that I collect a background. So I'll just click here. So once the background has been collected over the full range that I'm looking at, I can now put in my sample, so over here. I will start with my 10 millimeter cuvette, and I will open my sample handling unit. When you are putting in your cuvette, you always have to make sure that you note the orientation because of the biofringence in the cuvette itself. It means that if I do a collection with my uh, with this number in that orientation, next time I cannot turn it this way around. I have to keep it the same. So I put this in and I will close the lid. And in the software, I will make sure that I name my trace and I will just call it water 10 millimeter cuvettes. And I will click acquire. After I collected my 10mm trace, I will close the window 
and I will change the cuvette to be the short path length instead. I'll take out my 10 mm path length. When you're using a smaller size cuvettes, you have either the option of using a different cuvette holder or you can use a spacer like this. Now I'll use the spacer for this one. I will then rename the file so I know which file is which and I will collect a trace for the shorter path length. When I have collected both traces, I can now overlay them like this. So there's two things to notice here. The blue line is the 10 mm path length, the red line is the 0.5 mm path length. As you can see, the absorbance is much less for the 0.5 mm path length. It means that using a shorter path length, your buffer system will have a lower influence on your data and the likelihood of you to collect data far into the UV range is bigger. Other thing you can notice is that there's a little bump here on the red line, if I zoom in. That indicates that maybe my cuvette is not completely clean. So running a water trace can also be used to check if your cuvette is actually clean or not. So after I've been looking at the two different path lengths, I've decided that using the shorter path length might be the best option for this experiment. I then would like to uh, investigate how my buffer compares to my whole sample. And for doing that, I first set up the software to use CD instead of absorbance. I will cover the same rate range as before over the same time frame and then what I will do is that I will collect the background against nothing and I will then collect a trace of the buffer and then a trace of the sample. So once I've done that, this is pre-done, um, this is what it will look like my lysozyme sample and my water sample. So this is still not in a CD mode, this is in absorbance mode or looking at the absorbance. What I'm looking at here is to gain a good difference between the red trace which is my lysozyme sample and the blue trace which is my buffer. Sometimes you experience that the buffer absorbs a lot and it might be advantage to increase your concentration of your sample to make a bigger difference. Once you know what concentration to use of your uh, sample, you can then start your experiments. Okay, since I've already gone over all the settings of wavelength, range and so on, I won't repeat that, but when you're setting up your experiments, the important thing to remember is to change the signal to CD mode, collect your background against your buffer, preferably take the absorbance option, so you always have that as a control, and then you acquire your data. The data that I have acquired based on my previous uh, data is this data here. Um, sorry. Lysosome, final, this one. And that's the, then the CD spectrum. In the end of the day, when you have finished all your experiments and you want to turn uh, off the system, you will close down the software and it will ask you if you're sure that you want to close it and you will say yes. You will turn off the circulator on the bottom. <laughs>